Hi everyone, welcome. In this session, we are going to learn three types of learning methods in neural computing and machine learning. I will introduce the basic definition and problem formulation for each learning method and provide illustrative examples for your intuitive understanding. Upon completion of this video, you are going to learn real applications for each learning method. I will also introduce Pavlovian conditioning, which forms the basis of reinforcement learning. First, let's look at three learning paradigms that are commonly used in neural computing and machine learning. They are supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, the data is labeled. We train the neural network model on labeled data to get better accuracy. The goal of supervised learning is to learn the mapping function from input to output, such that when we have new input data, we can use this mapping function to predict the output. Unsupervised learning is performed on unlabeled data. We train the model on unlabeled data without any guidance. The goal for unsupervised learning is to discover the underlying patterns or structures of the data in order to gain more knowledge about the data. Reinforcement learning is a learning model proposed by a London-based company called DeepMind. Reinforcement learning is all about learning by interacting with an environment to maximize the reward. We will talk this later in detail. Reinforcement learning enables an agent to learn how to make decisions within an environment using feedbacks from its own actions and experience. The feedback include reward or punishment. It is important to notice the difference between supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is teach by historical example, and reinforcement learning is teach by experience. In supervised learning, there is no feedback, but in reinforcement learning, we will get a reward or punishment as feedback from the environment. Next, I will elaborate each learning method. First, let's take a look at supervised learning. Supervised learning is one of the most important learning methods in neural computing. In supervised learning, we train the neural network model on labeled data. The problem of supervised learning can be formulated as follows. Given x and y, where x is data and y is label, our goal is to learn a mapping function from x to y, so that we can use this mapping function to predict the new output for new input data with better accuracy. The process of learning the mapping function from training data set can be thought of as a teacher supervising the learning process. There are two important applications for supervised learning. They are regression and classification. The main difference between them is the output type. For regression, the predicted data is ordered, and the output is to distinguish the data into real numbers which are continuous values, such as house price prediction. For classification, the predicted data is unordered, and the output is to separate the data into several categories, which are discrete class labels, such as email span classification. Next, I will give you an illustrative example to show the basic idea for supervised learning. We have a lot of fruit such as apples, oranges, and bananas. Some fruit has a labeled name, but some doesn't. We use the question mark for those unlabeled fruit. Our goal is to build a neural network classifier 
using supervised learning that distinguish whether a given unlabeled fruit is an apple, orange, or banana. We take the following three steps. Firstly, we load the data set and divide it into two parts, labeled fruit and unlabeled ones. Then, using labeled fruit, we trained our neural network to learn a mapping function from fruit to its name. For example, these are apples, these are bananas, those are oranges. After our training, the neural network becomes intelligent and has the ability to classify unlabeled fruit. Next, we use unlabeled data to test our neural network. We fed an apple into the neural network. It outputs the correct label, apple. Then, we fed an orange. The network outputs the correct label, orange. This is how the neural network is trained through supervised learning. Based on this example, we can see that neural computing is all about using data to train a neural net. We first split data set into training data and testing data. Then, using training data, we trained our model to produce the neural network. Then, using test data, we use neural network to predict the output for new inputs and determine the predictive accuracy. The second learning method is unsupervised learning. Different from supervised learning that requires a teacher to supervise the learning process on labeled data, unsupervised learning focuses on unlabeled data, and we trained our model on unlabeled data without any guidance. There is no correct answers, no teachers to supervise the learning process. Thus, this process is called unsupervised learning. The problem of unsupervised learning can be formulated as follows. Given the data X with no labels, our goal is to learn the underlying patterns and structures of X to gain more knowledge about the data. Typical real-world examples for unsupervised learning include clustering and association. Clustering is the task of dividing the data points into a number of groups. We call them clusters, such that data points in the same groups are more similar to each other than to those in other groups. A well-known clustering algorithm is k-means algorithm, which is very popular in machine learning. The goal of k-means is to identify clusters in a given data set and allocate each data point to the nearest cluster while keeping the centroids as much as possible. In the k-means algorithm, k refers to the number of centroids specified by the user, and the means refer to averaging the data, that is, finding the center of each cluster. Association is another application of unsupervised learning, which is quite popular in recommendation systems. In some shops or online Amazon, when a customer bought an item, the system will recommend similar items to the customer by showing that customers who bought this item may also be interested in the following items. These recommendations are actually based on the association, that is, the similarity between the products. We can get these similarity information through unsupervised learning to identify the underlying graph structure of the items. For example, two items can be evaluated as similar if they are bought by the similar customers. 
We will talk about these structure similarity search in details as an unsupervised method in future lectures. Now let's look at an example of unsupervised learning, connectivity-based clustering. In this example, given seven data points, we wish to identify the underlying patterns of the data points using connectivity-based clustering. The clusters are defined by grouping the nearest neighbor based on distance between the data points. The basic idea is that nearby data points are more related than other points farther away. One cluster contains other clusters. In this example, node 5 and 6 are closest, therefore we group them first. After that, node 4 and the red one are closest, and we group them. Then, we group node 1 and 2 as they have the shortest distance. So on and so forth, we can get a dendrogram which shows a tree-typed hierarchy of clusters. This hierarchy of clusters is an underlying pattern of the seven data points, which is discovered through unsupervised learning. The third learning model is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is invented by DeepMind, which is a London-based company. It studies how an agent can learn to behave through feedback and interaction with an environment to maximize rewards and minimize punishments. In reinforcement learning, there are no predefined data, no answers. This is different from supervised learning, whose training is based on labeled data. However, a reinforcement agent will decide what to do to perform the task well. In the absence of training data, reinforcement learning learns from its experience. This differs from supervised learning that learns from the labeled examples. The problem of reinforcement learning can be formulated as follows. Given state action pairs, the goal is to perform the task well by maximizing future rewards over many time steps. Real-world applications of reinforcement learning include AlphaGo and Autonomous Vehicle. There are several new concepts in reinforcement learning, such as agent, environment, action, and reward. Let me explain them clearly. In reinforcement learning, an agent takes actions in an environment, which is interpreted into a reward and a representation of the state, which are sent back into the agent. An agent is the one who takes actions. For example, when I trained a dog to sit down, the agent is the dog. An action is a move that the agent can make in the environment. In my previous example, the dog's sitting or walking is an action. The environment is the world in which the agent exists and operates. In my previous example, the surroundings of the dog, such as a house and the trainer, are the environment. After the agent's command, dog will take an action, such as sitting or walking. The environment will send back observations to the agent. These observations include a reward and a new state of the agent. Here, the reward is the feedback that measures the success or failure of the agent's action. For example, if the dog sits down, then I will give the dog a bone as a reward. The state describes the current situation of the agent. For example, the current position of the dog. After the reward and the new state are sent back to the agent, the agent will update its actions in response to the reward and the current state in order to maximize the reward in future. Now I will use another example, Pac-Man game, to explain this. 
The goal of the Pac-Man is to eat food in the grade while avoiding the ghost on its way. We want to train the Pac-Man intelligently. Here, Pac-Man is the agent. The greater world is the environment. At each time, Pac-Man can take one of the actions, such as move to left, right, up and down. The reward is the score. Pac-Man receives a reward for eating food and punishment if it is killed by the ghost, that is losing the game. The state is the location of Pac-Man in the grid world. The total accumulative reward is Pac-Man winning the game. To maximize rewards, the Pac-Man should be trained by avoiding the ghost and eating the food and the scared ghosts as much as possible. The Pac-Man learns by trying all the possible paths and then choosing the paths which give him food with the least chance for meeting the ghosts. Each right step in the game will give the Pac-Man a reward, and each wrong step will subtract the reward of Pac-Man. The total reward, that is the final score, will be calculated at the end of the game. Apart from the Pac-Man game, I will also use an example of a training dog to illustrate the mechanism of reinforcement learning. Suppose I have a dog, Max, and want to train Max to sit down. I would give Max a command to sit down. Then Max responds by taking an action. If the action of Max is close to my desired instruction, I would give Max a bone as a reward. Otherwise, for example, if Max is walking, then there is no reward. After several tries, Max becomes intelligent and learns from this that he would get a bone if he sit down. This is the main idea of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is based on the concept of conditioning in psychology. A well-known example is the Pavlovian conditioning, also known as classical conditioning, which states that a new conditional reaction can be linked to an unconditional response through learning. For example, let's train the dog to associate food with the sound of the bell. Before conditioning, the dog is introduced to the food alone. The dog is so excited to see the food and salivates in the presence of the food. Next, we introduce the dog to the sound of the bell alone. Since the dog cannot associate this sound with anything rewarding, there is no salivation response. After that, we introduce the dog to the food while the bell is run at the same time. Due to the presence of the food, the dog salivates. The repeated pairing of food and bell means that the dog learns the association between food and the sound of the bell. Eventually, ringing the bell alone without providing food to the dog is sufficient to make the dog salivate. Pavlovian dog is a learning procedure that involves pairing a stimulus, food, with a conditioned response, salivation, which lays the foundation for reinforcement learning. In this section, we have mainly introduced three learning models. Supervised learning works on labeled data. Given x and y, where x is data and y is label, the goal is to learn a mapping function from x to y. Unsupervised learning works on unlabeled data. Given the data x, without any labels, the goal is to learn the underlying patterns or structures of x. In reinforcement learning, there are no predefined data and no answer. The given data are state action pairs. The agent will learn to behave through feedback and interaction with an environment 
to maximize future rewards over many time steps. We should pay attention to the difference between supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is to teach by example, whereas reinforcement learning is to teach by experience. We have also shown the real-world applications for each learning method. For supervised learning, two typical applications are classification and regression. The difference between them is that classification is processing unordered data and will output a discrete value, which is a labeled class, whereas regression deals with ordered data whose output is a continuous real number. For unsupervised learning, clustering and association are two important applications. We should pay attention to the difference between clustering and classification. Clustering is an unsupervised learning method based on unlabeled data, whereas classification is a supervised learning method based on labeled data. The last learning model is reinforcement learning. The goal of reinforcement learning is to train an agent to complete a task within an environment to maximize rewards and minimize punishment. There are many emerging applications such as AlphaGo autonomous vehicles. I have also used two examples for training Pac-Man to be smart in the game and a training dog to sit down to describe the basic mechanism of reinforcement learning. Last but not least, we have learned the Pavlovian conditioning, which is the basis of reinforcement learning. I use an example of the Pavlovian dog to show how to train the dog to associate food with the sound of the bell. The importance of the Pavlovian dog is that a new conditional reaction can be linked to an unconditioned response through learning.